To see the light that shines from a true, true friend. Oh, sunset shimmer is exceptionally early. Uh, one moment. For Dr. Wolf? Uh, that would be me. Hold on tight. Just in time. I've made an apricot coron and elderflower tea. Join me. Miss Aramau, what is going on? We don't have another session for a few more weeks. You're right. We don't have a session for me for a while. But today is a session for you. I'm sorry? Today, my good wolf, I am the doctor and you are the patient. I'm sorry I had to resort to such drastic measures, but needs must. I'm worried about you. In what way? I know about you from experience, but knowing how you feel is another story. So today's session is about opening up. I see. Thus, my good doctor, it is finally your turn. I want to help you. So, <clears throat> tell me how you feel. I, um, I'm not really sure how to talk about myself without first providing a listening ear to others. That's very admirable, and it's part of why we adore you so much. But where do you think that comes from? Have you always been that way? Everyone else first, Dr. Wolf last? Oh, I'm sure it hasn't always been that way. But when you've spent so long feeling like listening to others and helping them through their problems is what brings you the most fulfillment in life, you really start to get used to it. Over time, you may even depend on it. So your main source of fulfillment is helping others through listening. Hmm. You remind me of my old therapist. He'd rarely say anything, just let me ramble. And it helped. So I'd say you're doing your job right. But don't you ever feel like you need to say something about yourself? I know that I barely go a few sentences without spilling my guts about something important to me. I sometimes overshare. But I have noticed that you do not share as much, preferring to absorb rather than expel. Why do you think that is? I suppose I can get long-winded in my explanations at times, but that's not really the core of why I tend to keep my struggles close to my chest. One of the more relevant reasons would have to be respecting the privacy of others, not wanting to make assumptions. Even though there are deep-rooted struggles I deal with in times of feeling the most alone, nearly every one of them at least partially involves someone else. Even if I'm in the midst of despair and discouragement, not knowing the answers to the most complicated of questions, I'll still deter myself from discussing with others if there's even the slightest chance of upsetting someone else close to me. It is not my place to bring up personal topics, even if I'm not sure it would be considered personal. I can bring up my own experiences in helping others with their problems far easier because it is serving a purpose outside of my own needs and don't involve potentially harmful information about others. You have many valid points, Doc, and I commend you for wanting not to upset or harm others, whether they be close to you or even a stranger. But I feel that perhaps you may be missing something. What if those close to you want to help you through those times of despair and discouragement? What if we gain our fulfillment from helping you? You do so much for others, and I know it's not in your nature to be selfish. But sometimes I think you may need to be for just a moment. It reminds me of a scene from the original Fruits Basket anime. I haven't seen the new one, don't judge me. Toru Honda's mother told Toru, we are all born with selfish desires, so we can all relate to those feelings in others. But kindness is something made individually by each person. And even Kyo Soma told her that she can be selfish and say what she wants to once in a while. You are very much the embodiment of Toru Honda, my dear friend. Selfless, kind, and generous. But even she had her breaking point, had her moments where she really needed to rely on Kyo Yuki and the others. 
I'm not saying you should go around blurting out things without any care for your audience. That's my job. But if one of your friends or loved ones notice you're feeling down and ask you about it, you can tell us. No matter how ugly it gets, you can tell us. That is high praise, I must admit. Fruits Basket has been, and perhaps always will be, my most favorite anime series. To be honest, I'm sure that Toru was at least a partial inspiration for Dr. Wolf the character, and how we see each other can be very much like those stories and characters. I suppose I can say that your intentions are admirable, Miss Aramal, and I do appreciate your willingness to serve. It can be good for us to be selfish and say what we want once in a while, as you put it. Perhaps relating with others can help us find answers to our deepest questions, or most difficult struggles. Although, there can still be cases where circumstances are beyond our ability to control, or even change. We may learn, adapt, and persist through great challenges, which oftentimes leads to us becoming greater than we ever were before. It is good for us to struggle, as becoming complacent in our daily lives can easily lead to stagnation. However, inevitably we can and will run into circumstances that we so desperately want to change, and yet try as hard as we might, we learn that some things in life are beyond our ability to change. It can be very easy to despair when that happens. Or, like I've been encouraging others to do for years now, we can strive onwards without our greatest dreams, find purposes and service which we may not have ever expected. And, yes, such actions don't take away that ache from remembering the dream you strive so hard towards and couldn't achieve. But I do believe it gets easier to manage over time, as long as you keep it up every day. Now, as you were hoping from this conversation, Miss Arbel, it can be helpful to talk about one's pain from time to time. Show others your vulnerabilities, which in turn can help them relate to your experiences. Unfortunately, there are still times when revisiting the hurt and despair, focusing on your shortcomings even when you've already admitted there was nothing further you could have done, it can have negative effects on your ability to serve others in need. Especially when each time you bring it up with a select few individuals, you feel as though you've only taken steps backwards in the face of still not finding answers and still not feeling as though you can put it behind you. This may seem counterintuitive, especially since I keep encouraging others to open up about their worries, but part of the reason you've come to admire me so much, Miss Arma, is because I remind myself of a very particular phrase on a regular basis. Forget yourself and get to work. Though I'm sure you're not feeling very happy to hear that from me right now. No, that's fair. Like I said, there's going to be a time and place for being selfish, going backwards or what have you. As long as you give yourself that time to go back to those base, self-preserving instincts every once in a while, you can forget yourself and get to work as well. There just needs to be a balance, I guess. And what I feel in this session isn't as important as it normally is, Doc. Today is about you. Today celebrates your small little selfish side where you can reflect on yourself without it having a purpose other than to just reflect. And yes, I understand why it may seem like you're taking a step backwards. I do that all the time with my diet. <laughs> but sometimes... I think we need to take those backward steps because you can see forward a little more clearly. Let's use the example of a maze. You go forward and forward and forward, but without reflecting on where you've been, you end up lost. 
Life isn't a straightforward path. It's a huge, horrible, wonderful, scary, exhilarating maze full of instant death spikes and lovely waterfalls. Sometimes you need to retrace your steps a bit so you can see forward a little more, or so you can maybe learn something. Maybe even make a different decision the next time a corner like that comes around. I mean, look at our first session. I talked about things that happened 14 years ago, and they still affect me today. But when I look back, I see things I didn't before. I see certain behaviors I had or others showed me, and I know what they mean. I see how I can help others avoid my mistakes. But I also see why I never want to go back that route again. Don't stay in the little path you made behind you, but use it as a step back to learn. After all, I believe it was you who told me growth is optional when change inevitably enters your life, right? I suppose what I'm trying to get at is that you shouldn't be too afraid to step back a step or two in the maze. Especially when you have friends and loved ones right with you to soldier on with you. You are you, Doc, and I don't want you to change completely. Or even much at all. I just wanted to make sure you know that you're safe with me. With those who care for you. You can be as despairing, as discouraged, as selfish as you want with us, and we won't leave you or judge you. You don't have to open up more right now. I think I've exhausted your selfish side for the day. But know that you can always come find me, or Bliss, or Firebrand, or Thespio, or any of us, if you need that one little selfish moment. Be our little rice ball when we need to be, and only when you're comfortable with it. It is well to have friends who wish to support me. And I know such words will help to keep me going. Thank you kindly for the conversation, Miss Armau. I think it is time I get back to work so I can focus on the far more positive aspects of life again. Can I be unkidnapped now? Of course. But two things before. One, don't forget to look up. And two... Would you like to join me? Of course. It's good to be helping.